Moving on to chapter 7 now, we're, we're done with our discussion on probability for the moment. And now we'll turn our attention to uh, the study of, of statistics a little bit more. And um, in section 7.1, what we'll talk about is graphing a particular type of data called qualitative data. So you can see uh, what we want to do in, in, in uh, slide number three. We want to uh, identify a population and a sample. Classify data as either qualitative or quantitative. And then we have a couple graphs we want to construct. Uh, bar graphs and pie charts. So that's we, let's get at it. And uh, talk about types of data a little bit. Uh, so in slide number four, we can see that uh, data that can be placed into distinct categories according to some characteristic attribute or non-numerical label is called qualitative data. Uh, sometimes it's called categorical data because this allows us to place data into groups. For example, if we're, if we're uh, surveying a class and we want to survey what color everyone's eyes are, think about what about what the data would look like. It would be a bunch of words, blue and brown and green and hazel, that kind of thing. So we can place that data into categories, and that's an example of qualitative data. Now contrast that with data that is numerical in nature and that can be ordered and ranked. That's called quantitative data. That's the kind of data we'll talk about in Section 7.2 on uh, how to graph that. All right, so let's take a look at an example to make sure we have this uh, idea here. In slide number five, it says to determine whether the data are qualitative or quantitative. And it says the rankings uh, of service at a suburban restaurant. So it can be, uh, you, know, you you've probably seen in, if you go into a restaurant, those little survey cards, you fill it out, you know, how are we doing? Uh, little survey cards. And, and here we can rank the service as excellent, good, or poor. Well, let's think about that for a minute. If we, if, we, if we collect all those cards and we look at the data, the data would be a bunch of words. It would be, you know, some people would say excellent, some people would say good, and, and then some others would, would classify the service as poor. So it looks like this is, this is data that is numerical in nature. So that's an example of qualitative data. Uh, now, in slide number six, one more thing. If you look at uh, uh, exercise 18, that's an example of quantitative data, data that's more numerical in nature. All right, so let's start to take a look at these uh, um, graphs that can be associated with qualitative data. First, we want to look at bar graphs. So in slide number seven, we can see the uh, bar graphs are a type of graphs <clears throat> that are used to give a graphical description of qualitative data. And we, remember we said that qualitative data is grouped into categories. Sometimes those are called classes. We'll talk about that more later. And the number of data items that fall into each category or each class is called that category's frequency. So the frequency is the number of data items which fall into each category. All right, so in slide number eight, let's look over some of the properties of bar graphs. You see, I'm sure you've seen them before, but what we want to do now is to kind of formalize what the rules would be for um, constructing bar graphs. First, notice here the horizontal axis always contains the, um, uh, the, uh, the categories the qualitative data labels. Uh, second, the vertical axis is labeled with the frequencies. So uh, we'll have scale marks for the frequencies that go up and down on the vertical axis. The actual category names will go on the horizontal axis. And one other property, and this is probably the one that uh, you maybe not be used to, uh, the data are arranged from largest to smallest in frequency from left to right. Uh, that's specifically a type of bar graph that's called a Pareto chart that has this sort of characteristic. Um, and we can do that because notice that the, the categories rarely have order to them as well. Uh, the height of the bars are determined by the frequency. And as far as, uh, you know, drawing the bars, they have equal width, 
and have an equal space in between them. So, so there's always a gap in between the bars in the bar graph. And finally, uh, we always want to label the axes and give a title to our graphs. So in slide number nine, let's take a look at an example of one of these, these bar graphs here. Uh, it says the number of titles of new books imported into the U.S. in various subjects during 1997 is shown in the table. And we want to construct a bar graph of that. So notice here, uh, for example, there were 190 new titles in education, 273 in fiction, and so on. Let's just take a look at the data real quick. The data is almost, if we look at the categories, it's almost in order, isn't it? Education is the least, and then fiction. And then technology would come in third in the middle. And then history, and finally, medicine would be the largest one. And so if we take a look at slide number 10, um, I've used Microsoft Excel to get a picture of what this data would look like. Uh, so notice here, the largest class is medicine, and it was a little over uh, 700, 706. And then in history, it was uh, 501, so right there at 500. And then technology was right behind that, right? It was, uh, um, history was 512, technology 501. And so we can see with the Pareto chart style of bar graph, uh, the one that w the the data that has the highest frequency medicine, all the way down to the one that has the smallest frequency education. So if we want to graph this by hand, think of what, what it would look like. We would just draw our uh, our horizontal scale and our vertical scale, and then we'd want to put scale marks over for our frequency. So let's see, we could start with 100. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and we could stop with 700. And now remember, that is the frequency. That's what that horizontal scale uh, represents. And then down here, we can put our... Um, uh, on the horizontal scale, we can put our, our classes, our categories. First, we have medicine. And then the next one is history. And then we have technology. And then the fourth one is fiction books. And then finally, education. Now, um, we, now, we simply want to um, draw some bars which represent the uh, graphs that we want to use. So I'll just, uh, well, I'll just kind of pick a color here and uh, start to draw some pictures of that.